misty down at Scrutineering, Barry. Quite, quite agree, Keith. This is the part of the um, motocross scene that many people do not see. These are uh, these just a preliminaries, if you like to call it that. Obviously, these things have got to be taken into consideration. There we see a, a glimpse of the noise machine operator, or the noise operator there. Machine being weighed. Of course, there's a minimum weight that they can come in at. And every bike has to go through the noise and the weighing of the machine, and also the safety aspect. The safety aspect of the bike. And of course, nice close up uh, view there of Stephen Russell, one of the Irish riders. Yeah, of course, the, uh, the licenses all have to be looked at and signed, and each rider, as there we see Jeff uh, Leaney, another one of the Irish lads, comes up to hand his licence in. Lawrence Spence, and that looks like Lawrence Spence, indeed it's Lawrence. One of the very, very quick Irish lads. Alongside with uh, Neil Hudson there, just, just having his licence finally checked. Looks like he's had a go at the yo-yo overnight as well. <laughs> Did a bit of a problem there, but... Neil's not quite sure what it's all about, but uh, Lawrence and Neil's having a bit of a, a joke over it anyway. <laughs> well, everything seems to be fine now. And Neil Hudson gets the sign of seal of approval, I should say. Right. Very. On goes the tag. Lucky the exhaust pipe's not warm, Keith. Yeah. Otherwise, a few uh, Swiss Swiss swear words. <laughs> Got your tongue twisted there, Barry. The Swiss tongs. Yeah. That's right. Just uh, putting the clipper on now, just to make sure it's going to stay in place. Obviously, they'll be checked when they come to the start line. The um, start have a quick glimpse just to see that everything's above board. There goes Neil, taking away the Yamaha with Bill Buckter in the back wheel. Just to look like Bill Buckter anyway. Jeremy Watley there with uh, Chris Scribbins, his mechanic. Having a little chat about uh, the day's proceedings. Well, there's the first we see of the American team. Danny Chandler, number three. Jim Gibson's bike there, all with the mechanics, of course. That's, that's Johnny O'Mara's bike on the scales. Looks to be a bit of a problem there, Keith. Well, they, they think it's OK, but uh, no, that's a failed. P possibilities of... Uh... Too light. Underweight, correct. Too light, Barry. I think they've got to weld a little bit of lead on somewhere. Of course, the petrol tanks have got to have the minimum amount of petrol in. And uh, I think I saw, uh, yeah, it's a cigar in the mouth of uh, the scrutineer there. So I hope there's no hot ashes about. That's novel. Well, look, here we have the Americans back on the scales again. Let's see what the answer is this time. It's, it's in the balance, Barry. <laughs> Puns are flying this afternoon. And a shake of the head. It must mean, yeah, well, that's well, different. Well, it, it is different, yeah, a shake of the head means yes. It, it, well, it's obviously an Irish scrutineer. <laughs> Anyway, all's well that ends well. There's David yes, Bailey's. David Bailey's bike. Very immaculate bike, I should say. Very smart, very smart. Beautifully turned out, all these bikes. Of course, Americans on the Honda this year. Very successful year. Look at that. Immaculately turned out Husqvarna there. Very, very. Of course, the, the 83 model, although we're now in 82, it is the 83 model. And there, that uh, mist I was on about earlier. Now you see them, now you don't. The 
certainly, certainly taking their time through that mist, I would imagine. All going fairly steady at the moment, but I don't suppose they'll be going that steady when the mist rises. Harry Everts there, a nice rearward shot of Harry, and a very, very quick Suzuki. As the official gets splattered in mud. Neil Hudson, out um, for his first time. Condor man. Thumbs up, so Neil's away. There's Dave, now Dave should stop and see if it's all clear. No, Dave's not bothered. <laughs> Dave's away. Straight out, no messing. I think he was looking left for safety anyway, but... Uh, there's Jim Gibson, the first of the Americans out for practice. Sitting very low on the Honda. Dave Thorpe. Popular Berkshire lad, of course. And another one of the Americans there, watching Jeremy Watley, a practice start. Already we see the mist beginning to clear now on the yeah. horizon, so less difficulties for the riders. As we see Andre Romans take to the hills on the on the big red on the big red peril. Look at me on the yellow peril. Magoo over there having a chat with his mechanic. Magoo sitting very low in his seat. Very low, very low indeed. Obviously, the uh, Americans are not over tall, are they? So, obviously, there's much weight so they can get back to the centre of the machine. One of the riders for me last week, apart from Danny McGill Chandler, was uh, Rolf Diefenbach, Barry. Very fast rider. Yeah. And um, we were very lucky to get Rolf. I think that's Rolf there, just coming in to finish. We were very lucky to get Rolf between practices to uh, have a word with him about last weekend and uh, how we thought he was going to fare today. Look first of all today to Rolf Diefenbach, the senior rider in the German team who had such a good ride last week in the Trophy de Nation when Rolf, I believe you were the only rider in the first 11 places that did not either come from Germany, Belgium or England. Yes, uh, I'm very lucky that I make so good races last Sunday. You know, this is my own ground. It's I'm living 30 kilometers from this place. And I start my motocross career in uh, Gailov. So I know the track very well. And also, the track was very hard, and this is what I like very much, this kind of track. And we can see in Sweden and Finland, my forms come better. I was following the sand, Chobe and uh, Laporte. So I was thinking maybe I can beat Chobe or some other good rider in uh, Gailov and the hard ground. Well, you certainly got amongst them last week. Ralph, what about your chances on the 500 machine today? You know, we have complete other team, only I'm the rider from last Sunday. And I'm normally a 250 rider, but uh, I can go strong in the 500 class. But I'm maybe four months my ride the 500. I was going to say, how many times have you ridden the 500 this year? Maybe five times. It's not a lot, is it, when you're thrown into a competition as fierce as this? Yeah, but I think when you change from the 250 to the 500, it's uh, not so much different. Some corners you have a too low gear, but uh, when after this qualified race, I think it comes much better. The last question, Rolf, how are Germany going to do? You sprung third on everybody last week, much to the joy of the German camp, I know. What about your chances this week? Yeah, many people asked me last week what for position you have, and I say normally it's the fourth or the fifth position, it's the right position. Uh, we are very lucky to make third position in Geildorf. 
And I think we are lucky when we are fifth tomorrow. In the top five, we are more lucky, we are fourth position. But I think three or four, fifth or sixth position. So no problem qualifying this afternoon? No, I don't think so. Well, let's hope you're right. Thank you, Rolf Diefenbach. Thank you. Very confident Rolf Diefenbach there, Barry. We'll let's see just see how he does do in the first of the qualifying heat. There's the man for me, one of my favourite riders of all time, Dave Thorpe. Of course, on his own in this the first qualifying heat, because we have only got three riders here. Graham Noyce crashed over in England on the Thursday, and of course we couldn't quite get Steve Beamish here in time. So only three riders out for GB. Let's see how they do, Keith. Well, we've got our fingers crossed for them anyway. There's a fair old array of colours there as these uh, gladiators come to this very peculiar looking gate. It looks a bit cumbersome, gate, doesn't it? Very heavy, one of the heaviest gates I've ever seen. Let's see how quickly it goes down. As these motocross jockeys flex their muscles now, ready for the anticipated start. On go the fuel, the final checks are taking place now. And it's all eyes on the gate. There they Whack, go. Down goes the gears. Oh, away they go. Most dangerous part of any practice or race, kids, obviously, is the uh, the beginning when all the riders are so closely grouped. Yeah, and there we have two Belgians and one Brit, I would say. <laughs> Stones are certainly flying on this Swiss soil this afternoon. Yeah, quite quite stony, yeah. A bit stony, man. There's a bit of dust flying as well, so. Uh, Mind you, once again, we're going to be really delighted with the weather. We see shadows all around the course, which donates, of course, the sun's there. heat with Dave Thorpe leading Andre Vromans and Harry Everts and we move on to the second of the qualifying races. Here we go Barry. Rolling of the Honda and the Honda is away for the qualifying heat two as the Swiss dust flies. And then we have a very, very fine, picturesque view of the Swiss countryside. Already they're beginning to make a few lines, the racing lines. There's Neil Hudson there in the green helmet, followed there by number nine, Jeremy Watley. So the two British lads very well placed. Although it's Daniel Peen, the French rider that's out in the lead at the moment. Obviously, and there he is. He's not too fond of these fine stones on this Swiss circuit. So he wants to try to get away from any early damage, I think, Keith, don't you agree? Yeah, yeah. Nice really being pulled there by one of the uh, riders. Neil Hudson there with the British Racing Green Helmet. Followed only two places behind by Jeremy Watley. So two British lads well placed. He's had a tremendous season for Jeremy Watley. He's yeah. ridden his heart out this season. A really improved rider. And of course, Neil Hudson did finish ve well, very well in the uh, in the 500 World Championship this year. Steady Eddie icon. He really doesn't put a foot wrong. He's always there at the finish. A fine view of that uh, Swiss hill there as one of the riders nearly lent a little bit too far back and uh, could have easily got the machine. So there we go, the chequered flag is down. And the qualifying teams, the United States of America, of course, by winning last year, they qualified, followed by England, Holland, Belgium, Italy, France and Austria. Early Sunday morning and the sun high across the mountains yet again and a very pleasant, hot day. I think we're all going to look forward to this. 
see a few of the vehicles going across there into the uh, paddock area. Yeah. The crowd now well and truly arrived. And all looking forward to practice. And of course, the first that they will see of the Americans. Gorgeous setting as well as we look across this great countryside, isn't it? There they are, looking for the first of the Americans to come round. And that's David Bailey. Bailey <laughs> doing some real tricks. Followed by Gibson. And Danny Magoo Chandler. So let's have a, a quick word with Danny. Let's talk to Danny Chandler. Good morning, Danny. After practice this morning, um, what do you think about the situation today? Oh, I think it's going to be good, I hope. Well, you won both races last week at the Trophy Donation. How do you rate your particular chances this afternoon? Well, I, I think I have a good chance today. I think it's just going to man on getting a good start. You know, if you don't get a good start, I think it's going to be a little bit harder to work back up, you know, from the back because the, the track is so rocky that you just got to really, you know, watch out how you pass and just be careful. I see. And do you think the opposition is going to be stronger today than last week? Because you certainly had some pressure put on you last week, didn't you? Yeah, I had a, a lot of pressure, always a lot of pressure from no, everywhere, you know. How do you raise America's chances today? I think we have a very good chance. Of retaining good. the trophy? Yeah. Well, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Who, who do you fear most? Oh, I fear everybody. Yeah. You know, I, don't think, I think no matter who gets a start, it's going to be you know, hard to get around. No matter who he is or what he rides, I think the key today is just going to be getting a good start. Well, let's see what happens later on. We've talked about today. Let's talk about you as an individual now and what are your plans for next season are you coming back to europe next year yeah i'd like to very much uh, i like the tracks suit me a lot better than the tracks in the states uh, i'd like to come over and ride the 500 grand prix next year if it's all possible with honda and you'll definitely be staying with honda next year yeah i think so yeah um hopefully then at the end of the grand prix season you would stay for the motocross and the again yeah, that's right. Well, it's certainly a, a lively future by the looks of it for you. Uh, I'm not going to waste any more of your time, and thank you again for your time, Danny Chandler. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we've got rid of the noisy helicopter, and now we've got a different noise now, but a very, very fine noise of the drums being played by, it looks like, a load of carrots. There we see the three British riders, Neil Hudson, Jeremy Watney and Dave Thorpe. David Bailey there, the uh, American, the tallest of the Americans. Danny McGoo. Van de Ven and Garrett Walsink. Dutch riders, Gerard Rond there. And the Irish lads. There's uh, Andre Romans coming back from uh, the presentation. They seem to enjoy themselves this afternoon, Keith, anyway. Yeah. There they go. Well, here we are for the first of the races, right across the nation, 500cc. Americans coming out on the line, as well as the British riders, Belgians, French riders. And there we see the traditional sin bins, I think you call them, Barry. The sweat boxes, which are, I think is quite uh, appropriate today with the way the sun's beating down on them. I think it will be a little bit warm in there this afternoon, Keith. Yeah. But they're all coming out onto the line, a few wheelies being popped across the front of the grid. Rather a large starting gate, Keith. I, not, I noticed that in practice when there's assembly. I thought, what a large gate, but uh, obviously they've got their own ideas of starting uh, it, gates. It's the heaviest one I've seen in Europe this year, but uh, here's the actual start, and the way they go, let's see who's the first to gate. And, wow, look at Magoo. Magoo streaks into the lead. 
I see Dave thought was right there. But look at that. Omara right at the back. Magoo, though, look at the way he goes into that berm, followed by Dave Thorpe. Talk about berm busting, it's ridiculous. There's Everts and Lequay and Romans, and there's Jeremy Watley. Jeremy Watley, went very well placed. So we've got two British lads in the first 10 or 10 or 11, 12 places. Which can't be bad, Keith. I did notice one thing in the practice session we watched earlier on. I saw Lequay go and well, he really did go. He looked in really fine battle. So this afternoon, we'll just see what he can do in the actual racing. I'll try and pick out a few riders here, but the, the dust and the stones and the dirt, it's really flying. It's very hard to pick out anybody at this. I think that's Case van der Ven that's just gone through there on the KTM. I think, I think I'm right in saying that the Americans are using some sort of guards on the bars. I don't blame them at all, Keith, because, as you said earlier on, the stones are really flying. You get them on the kneecap or the hand, they must dull the senses a little bit. Still Magoo, though, there in the lead from David Thorpe in second. Dave's going well. And that, two Belgians, Everts and Froman and Lequay, as you said earlier. Yeah. So uh, Lequay, he's is, is proved his point. He's into fourth place. And there's uh, Bailey, the second of the American, I think, through. Already beginning to knock out a little burn there on the inside of that bend there, Keith. I'll tell you what, it's a really good view there for, for spectators. Well, they're coming into that berm and then drop down the hill into the left-hander bend before they go into a double jump up the hill. That's right, a very spectacular course, actually, the Swiss course. Very spectacular indeed. Back with the leader, though, Magoo, still Magoo from Thorpe. Thorpe beginning to really chase out. There's there, Romans, Everts, and Le there's Lequay. There's Bailey. And Gibson, so it looks as if it's it's going to be tight between the scoring points anyway. It's going to be between the Belgians and the Americans. It doesn't look as though the Americans are going to have it all their own way in this particular uh, definitely. session. Look at Dolce go there, really turning in, making suspension work over time there. Yeah. Now, am I right in saying that the Husqvarna is now one of the very few machines using the twin shocks? It looks as if, from what we've seen today, it's. Yeah, it is the only machine here that's using twin shocks, um, apart from a few of the older KTMs. Yeah, but they say the, the 1983, we, we take it being the 83 um, Husqvarna, it's very, very smart and deep key. The, the white Husqvarna, yeah, but uh, as you say, twin shocks. There's the K and, and Joe Bay, but uh, I think Joe Bay's a lap down. But it's still Belgians in third, fourth and fifth spot. And as only three riders score points, the Belgians are doing very, very well indeed. I think, as we did, we spoke about this earlier, Keith, and I think we both agreed that the Belgians, on this particular circuit, in this particular condition, were going to excel. 33, Jackie Vimon going through there. Lovely wide, uh, well, I'll say wide line, very narrow line there to take his uh, counterpart. Yeah, Herbert Saltzman there, number 37, goes through. And Dolce again, <laughs> really pulling out all the stops. He's enjoying himself, obviously. But back with the leader, Danny Chandler again, followed by Thorpe, Romans, Everts, and Lequay, it should be. Yeah, there's Lequay. Just, just, just going off the racing for one moment, Keith. Why is it that we've got, uh, not why is it we've got Dave Thorpe on the Kawasaki, but why is it that we don't see many Kawasakis in racing today? Um, I really don't know. It's, uh, I suppose, it's Kawasaki policy. Um, there was only Dave Thorpe in the 500 Grand Prix this year on the, on the Kawasaki, the works Kawasaki anyway, and uh, nobody really knows what's going to happen in the 1983 season. But uh, Thorpe has shown very, very well indeed on the Kawasaki. Uh, he, he won the first race at Farley Castle this year, and of course he showed very, very well at the Trophy de Nations last week in Germany where Thorpe and Watley were the only real two riders to get anywhere near, anywhere near Magoo. That's right, that's right. So it's an extremely quick machine. Anyway, well, let's get back to the uh, the high rise there of some of these yeah. really spectacular... As we said before, this uh, this double jump, they go around this left-hander, then into this double jump. The Quay and Joe Bay goes through there. Joe Bay still a lap down, though. Thorpe drops down into a very, very tight left-hander. Oh, extremely quickly, yeah. 
look at the crowd. The crowd is massive, and aren't they enjoying it this afternoon in this Swiss sunshine? It's above the crest of the hill there. Well, they've come to they've come to see all the, all the action, and they're really getting the action today, aren't they? Everybody's pulling all the stops out, and um, you couldn't wish for better racing. Very demanding sort of circuit. I don't know what you think about it, but it's very. I don't mean this disrespectfully, but it's very Mickey Mouse. It's very tight turns. Very tight turns and a, a lot of spectacular leaps. Not a lot of greenery on the track at the moment. <laughs> what no, a lot, lot of has been knocking about anyway. A lot of stones. As you said earlier, there are a, a few of the riders with hand guards over uh, over the handlebars. I think it'll be three laps. But it, as uh, you may have noticed at the start of this race, it was right at the very back of the field. Yeah, I think, I think we did say it'd be interesting to see now uh, just how quickly he does come for the field and uh, for all intents and purposes he's really beginning to screw that uh, throttle back to the stop to get well, where he is at the moment well they're, they're, they're all out to get up into the top places M Magoo is out in the lead still uh, there's Bailey going through Bailey is uh, I'd say in about 6th spot at the moment behind the quake but Magoo is so consistent, so stylish, so cool under pressure. He never seems to put a foot wrong. I remember somebody saying to me once, if he stops on the machine, he could possibly win. Uh, over the last couple of uh, races we've seen, there's no, no reason to doubt that at all. Well, I, I, the way that we've seen Magoo ride these last week at the Trophy Donations and here today in the, the first in the Motocross Donations, uh, there's not really anybody... Whoop, oh, so look at that. It. That's the sort of thing, just a little bit of overindulgence and uh, two men drop it, spoiling the race for the next one, which is Dolce going through there. Dolce, so. it's his teammate, Giuseppe Gasparoni, that uh, yeah. did the damage. Rather a nice mouthful there, especially with a mouthful of Coca-Cola, Keith. Yes. That with Thorpe, though. Thorpe followed by... Romans, is it? Romans. Everts. No, the Quay. The Quay's the Quay. going, though. Now really going to begin to push through the field. And there's, there's Joe Bay. Watley, though, oh, we're very well placed. 53 Franco Pico. He's moved through the field well, so... And there's Hudson through. I'll tell you what, I reckon it's getting a little bit demanding out there now because the heat, I would imagine, is perhaps a little bit getting to them now. And with a few stones flying about, you know, they must be a little bit tense as well. So uh, I, I think they're beginning to feel the pace a little bit now, Pete. Well, they're definitely not strung out as much as they were, um, I'd say, as the trophy donation, it's like as we saw last week. But with um, Dolce, though, he's he's really going well, strong well today. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, not being disrespectful to the lad, but a little bit of a surprise packet this afternoon, Keith. There's a few fists going now, urging their uh, respective riders on. Yeah, that was Case van der Ven on the KTM. Was it? Going through, yeah, the 250 rider this year, but of course today, today on the 500, and doing quite well. Yeah. So Vromans is through, yeah, so Vromans is in second and Thorpe is down to third. So what's Dave doing wrong, do you think? So, well, it, it may be what you, what you said, Barry, about a um, little bit of heat might be, uh, might be telling on them. Uh, you can't really tell. Of course, it could be the d damping. We may have a little bit of problem with the damping. I'm not going to say the Kawasaki's prone to that, but uh, well, I noticed it, before, towards the end of the race, the uh, the damping does seem to slow him down a little bit. Well, we, we did see the Kawasaki breaking half at Luxembourg. <laughs> yes, it wasn't a very good sign. There's Watley chasing uh, Joe Bay, but uh, Joe Bay, as we keep saying, is a lap down. Franco Pico chased there by Neil Hudson. Yes, Neil's having and a Neil bit Hudson of a there been been chased by Jim Gibson. Good view on the inside of the track, a little oh, bit dangerous, but, I thought. Yeah, but very spectacular though. Very spectacular. A little bit near the action, that lad there. Yeah. Obviously he's got um, not a lot of respect for his lens, I wouldn't have thought. Oh, oh and look, there's another one down. Looks like Connie Connie on the Connie Carlson. Well, there's, there's Dolce really powering on again. That's right, he hasn't lost a lot over it, though. <laughs> no, but back with Magoo. Magoo into the bomb hole. Mr Chandler, of course. Chased by Romans. Romans seems to have caught him up a little bit there's there. Dave. Dave thought being dropped slightly, but still holding third from Everts in fourth. 
Emmett is beginning to uh, use it a little bit, getting that um, Suzuki really on full steam now, Keith. Yeah, there's Bailey, go Bailey through with Lequay just slightly in front of him. Joe Bay through, there's Watley on the Suzuki. We should be looking now for Hudson. And there is Hudson, yeah. Now. That little bit of a divot there, they're knocking out. The front wheel's beginning to uh, get well dug in there, so yeah. be careful they don't get too uh, silly. Well, Gibson just behind Pico. Thirty-one. There's uh, there's Bruno through. It's a nice little uh, jump into that bomb out bomb hole, and then straight back into the ruts there. And we watch Dave Thorpe drop yeah. down. That's it. Whack open the power, and off he goes over the crest. The camera angle doesn't really show how steep that really is. It really is a bomb hole. You've got to be a spectator down in the hollow to appreciate just how steep it is, Keith. Yeah. There's the quay being pushed all the way by uh, by Bailey. And Bailey, no no message, straight into that hole and out again. As though it just does not exist. Yeah. As does Watley. Watley straight in. Hudson straight in. Just no no shutting off or anything. That's it's right. straight in and straight out. Pico goes through. It's not what you would say at the men from the boys because they're all men here this afternoon. Yeah. So it's there's Bruno. Omar, so Omar has really done well to, to pull up into the top 15, 20 places. He's really poured himself. There's suspension working over Tom and Honda there. But look at the gap now that's been pulled out between Roman's the second man there. He certainly didn't lose anything by going on the inside line, Keith. And there is Dave. There's Dave Thorpe in third. Big um, Berkshire bomber. We're looking now for Everts to come through. 28, that's Garrett Walsing, but I think he's a lap down now. But look at the gap now that's... Opened up. The open, yeah, between uh, Thorpe and Everts. Everts being dropped a mile. Well, uh, it's not like uh, Everts to be dropped. Uh, 30, Patrick Fiora going through. It's... Bailey is, Bailey's through is in next. So the Americans beginning to uh, come back into the, uh, the racing again. 54, Giuseppe Andriani goes through. There's Watley. Watley should be followed by Hudson. And there is Hudson. There's Neil. So we've got three British riders up in contention, as have the Belgians and the Americans. That's so right. it's going to be really tight. There's not, you, we're not going to see the Americans running away with this one anyway. Is, uh, is Neil Hudson on the 83 Yamaha this year? Well, already, I should say, is, is Neil... No, he's on, he's on the 82 Works Yamaha that he's, that he's done all the uh, World Championship rounds with this year. Coming now towards the, the end of the race, and uh, lap, lap boards being shown to all the riders to... Come on, you've got to get That's that right. next man. Getting rather excited all Because now. it's points that count. Look at the look how the Americans and the Americans are going quite frantic now to get Bailey up into uh, into um, a higher position. Amongst the fray, That's right. They're even contenders. You see the Italian flag there on the crest of the hill. There's Hudson going through. I think with only one or two laps to go, the the. We're going to close up a little bit now. Yeah, Dave Arnold there on the left, the uh, American team manager. Trying, manager. trying to urge all, all his riders on as uh, Omara being pushed all the way. <laughs> They're enjoying it anyway in the, uh, the Swiss sun this afternoon. Really enjoying it. I think that their um, Italian... Uh, well, they're not the Italian team managers, but... Uh... Well, Luso, she's doing a bit of a circus act there, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was uh, Giuseppe Gasparoni, who crashed earlier, going through, being... Uh, could well have been his wife that was cheering him on. Well, I hope for his sake it is. And we see one lap from the American board. You were very As quick there, Keith, the US of A, you were very quick there. Oh, I was very quick. quick yeah. Ten out of ten for observation. <laughs> was that what a lot they went through then? Just missed the um, actually flying at this stage, so it's very difficult to pick up the uh, some of the riders from behind. The Honda camp there looking on anxiously. Yeah. 
very anxious. <laughs> There's not very many spoils there, is there, apart from that young lady at the, at the back? Who knows what she's crying about, I wonder. There she is. Ale, ale, oh! Yeah, I think she's rather excitable. Yeah, I think she wanted him to go a bit quicker. She's very attractive. And looks like the chequered flag, yeah, and it's got to be Magoo. Unless he's fallen off with the 100 yards. No, there's Magoo. Punching his fist. So, yeah. Magoo wins yet again. And we should be looking for... Vroman's second, Vroman's his second, Thorpe comes in in third. So D Dave's not this space himself, Keith? No, marvellous ride, really. And such good company, really. Bailey through, being clapped in by uh, all his supporters. Uh, Watley and Hudson, the two British lads coming in together. So they've not rode bad at all this afternoon. They've really got the um, English crowd on the feet, I would imagine, with some super yeah. road racing. There, there are a few British supporters here, but uh, of course Switzerland is fair all right. It is quite a, quite a drive. And, and we also have seen uh, quite a few American supporters. So whether they've come over as family or, uh, or may even have been from the German bases, uh, not that far away. Bit of entertainment at uh, half time. <laughs> Looks pretty spectacular as well, Keith. Very spectacular. So it, here we have the results anyway. First, Danny Chandler. Second, Andre Romans. Third, David Thorpe. Fourth, David Bailey, USA. Harry Everts in fifth. Laquay sixth. Seventh, Jeremy Watley. And eighth, Neil Hudson. So we've got three Belgians, three British riders, and two Americans in the top eight. Remember, that was heat one, so uh, we look forward with a lot of excitement, I think, Keith, for heat two. Yeah. We have a pretty good uh, idea of the flags, the different nations. And here we have the start of the second of the Motocross of the Nation races. Now, who will be the first one this time? Remember last time? It, it was Magoo last time, and it looks to me as if it's Magoo again. We can't really tell from where we're positioned at the moment because of the dust and but that's Magoo. Magoo is definitely out in the lead, followed by Lequay. Lequay from Gibson, Gibson from Watley. That I think was O'Mara. So O'Mara in a better position than what he than what he was in the first race. That was Gerard Ron going through. There was David Thorpe. But the riders coming through very, very quickly indeed. There's Joe Bay coming through. Obviously, Keith, on the second leg, there's going to be a lot more uh, stone. Well, not a lot more stones predicted, but a lot more dust flying. Well, the Americans have really got to go for it, using uh, an Americanism. That's right. Well, it looked to me as though they're first, second, and third, so uh, they've gone for it. The Americans definitely a lot better placed than they were in the first race. There's Heinz Kinnigartner, very spectacular through there, so is Dolce going through. Gives you a little bit more of a sense of uh, urgency about the riders when they look from this particular angle. The 54 Giuseppe Andriani, one of the Italians goes through, as 22 Arne Linfers drops down, as 36 George Ryder from Austria. There's uh, Harry Everts. A good shot there, Keith. Coming out, out of the out of the skyline and really whistling down this uh, this bank, very very hard indeed to see any of the numbers and who the actual riders were. There we can pick out the Kawasaki of Dave Thorpe though, definitely. I'll tell you what, we've been extremely lucky though over the last few weeks for a bit of the weather key. It's been super, uh, very conducive to really exciting and fast races. Well, we were very very pleased with the weather we had, that we had in Gaudorf in Germany last week, but. Uh, to get an, another day like we had last week today, it's, um, well, you couldn't, you couldn't wish for a better day. That's right. Obviously, the spectators have paid uh, their money and they want to see some action, and action's what they're seeing. They really are a very large crowd here this afternoon. There's Mugu coming out of the Marrakeen leap. And there's two, two Belgians, followed by uh, Jim Gibson and David Bailey. So There's Watley, the first of the British 
drives it. Not start. Thorpe's down. I haven't seen Thorpe go through yet. There's uh, Omara go through. Garrett Walsink just gone through there. But no Thorpe yet. So what's happened to Dave? Because Dave was pretty well up with the lead in. He, uh, he was in third, second or yeah. third position. And it's gone wrong. And he, he's still not come through, so he, there's something happened somewhere. There's Everts and 32. That's Patrick Bonifat. There's Thorpe. There he is. There's well, Thorpe. So Thorpe has definitely had an off somewhere because there's Magoo through for um, his, his next lap, followed by Romans. Very, very tightly indeed there. So we've got America 1 and 4 and 5, and the Americans 2 and 3. And there's the first of the British riders, Jeremy Watley. There's O'Mara. So it'll be interesting to look for telltale signs on uh, Dave's machine as we see him come around the next lap then, because I didn't see anything uh, untowards on his bike, but uh, something obviously has happened. Well, I, I would think that he must have had an off somewhere. Yeah. But the race is definitely on up front, where we've got four riders, two Americans, two Belgians. 31 there, that's uh, Bruno. Why, why is it, you think, uh, I'll ask a silly question, Keith, why is it that the, the, the Belgians like the Suzuki, Suzuki machinery that much better than any other sort of machinery? And we've got the Americans on the Hondas and so on and so forth. Why do you think it is? <laughs> I think it must be one of those things. It's... Uh... I, I, I don't really know. It's because uh, you don't usually get. I mean, they okay. They're in a team event, but sometimes they do like to ride it as an individual. So you would think they would like individual machinery, but they all seem to be on the same, don't they? Apart from Lequay, who's on the Honda. That's <laughs> exception to the rule. Yeah. There's Bailey pushing Lequay all the way, and there's Watley really climbing through nice the air. Shot. Nice shot of Jeremy there. There's Hudson through. So it, it really looks as if the British lads have shot their bolt. And that Romans is in the lead. That's the first time that we've seen Magoo headed. Andre is really he's really knocking it back to the stops. He's really throwing everything. He's and he's, he's, the wind. he's being waved on by the uh, frantic crowd. <laughs> the frantic crowd, yes. Uh, so we've got Belgium one and three, America two and four. And there, that's Watley in fifth. You're right, Keith, what you just said a fraction earlier. I've not seen uh, Magoo headed. No, it, we've seen Magoo lead in uh, the first and second race in Gaeldorf, and of course he won the first race here today. Um, let's see if he can win it again. I think we're in for a few fireworks to <laughs> <laughs> definitely, towards the end. Definitely. Towards the end. Mind you, the only thing that adds a little bit more for the crowd, when you've got uh, an so accomplished rider as Magoo, being headed by uh, one of the very popular Belgian riders. Well, Romans did, did only just get beaten uh, in the 500 World Championship by only a, a handful of, uh, of points from uh, the American Brad Lackey this yeah, year, so uh, right. Romans is no mean rider. He's been, he's been around a few years, and I don't mean that uh, for the wrong reason, but he's a very experienced rider. We'll just have to wait and see if he's still got the lead. Everts has gone through, but he's... He's quite well down, as is Thorpe. So uh, I would think that it's going to be... No, oh, it's... Magoo is back in the lead. Well, well. So Magoo won. Roman second. Bailey's now third. That burn's beginning to catch a few riders out. I don't know if you noticed then, Magoo got a little bit crossed over that burn. He did And it. if that... Back this day, it's like Jeremy Watley gone. Jeremy Watley there, followed by uh, yeah, Neil Hudson. So they're keeping it pretty well wound in 35, front. Heinz Kinnigartner from Austria on the Yamaha. So we'll look now for the Dutch. But it's Jim Gibson with those um, hand covers. 26, that's Gerard Rund. And Dave Thorpe pushing on now past, I think that was Dolce. There's Magoo, though. Roman's still in second. 36. That's George Reiter, followed by Lequay. 22, Arn Linfors. And 32, Patrick Boniface. 
Watley and Hudson go through. So that's so a little the, private battle of their own, look of it. Well, it's, it's more of a, a little bit of a, a team ride, I think, each pulling uh, one another along. 27 case van der Ven going through. Nice little pass on the inside there, isn't yeah. it? Very nice, and that, as you were saying earlier, Patrick Fiora on the 1983 Husqvarna. Yeah, very smart machine. And before Jim Gibson goes through there, as does Dave Thorpe, out of the shadows into the very bright sunlight. Look at the crowd there. I'll just give you some indication, Keith, there's a huge crowd this afternoon. Look at them. Of course, we're now towards the end of the race. Romans. Still pushing the Suzuki right to the limit, I would imagine. The way in fourth. George Reiter goes through there. Neil Hudson should be followed by Jeremy Watley. It looks as if Jeremy's feeling the pace a little bit because he's definitely being dropped. Now, is that somebody about to pass him or uh, no. he's past them? He's certainly slowing down some, Keith. There's a O'Mara. 27 case van der Ven. So that the pace must really be telling now because yeah. they've had well the first race was very hot and this second race was is definitely no no cooler. But these machines these days are so reliable, Keith. I mean a few years ago uh, we won't mention machinery but some machinery were very very prone to breakdowns over this sort of uh, distance. And well, everything's advanced so much, hasn't it, right nowadays? Bailey, look, there's Bailey pushing Roman, so let's see if, if uh, Bailey can uh, snatch Satin from uh, from Roman. Such a help the mirror can cause no end. Yeah. But like Jeremy Watley's... Uh, there's it. Also, we look now yeah. just to see if... Um, there's O'Mara goes through. We're, yeah, we're, we're towards the latter stages of the race now. As Watley goes through, taking the signal from his mechanic, Chris Scrivens. These riders helped all the way, really, for, by these um, very efficient lap scorers. Um, very attractive lap There scorers. he goes. Magoo wins again. So the Americans very, very pleased. That's four races, four wins. First time he's been in, into Europe. But uh, still anxious. They, they still need they still need their American riders in. Well, that's, that's, that's one way of getting a rider in yeah, anyway. Running over back in points, probably no, look, so look, down. McQuay comes through. Um, Hudson. So we're, we're looking now for. Omar has finished. Woo! Ooh, that was a bit of a... <laughs> they really having a charge at the last... I think Jem just about got it by about a tyre width, I think, keep there. It, well, it looks as if the Americans have got on the board first OK. Yeah. And there we have the, the results of race two. Danny Chandler again. David Bailey just snatched second from Andre Romans. Uh, Jean-Claude Lequay in fourth, followed by Neil Hudson, Heinz Kinney Gardner. But it's still the Americans, the Americans first overall with 24 points, Belgium second with 40, and uh, England, Great Britain, 51 points third. Couple bad kids, can't we? What a superb day's racing we've had. Absolutely tremendous. I the bet they're quite ready for that champagne as well. The Americans have fulfilled all that is available, don't you think? It looks like they're having a pretty cool shower yeah. at the moment with that, show, that so champagne. Else, I think, yeah. Very nice uh, medals, medallions, what, what we call them. Oh dear, I've heard of beer shampoo, but I think that's going to the extreme. <laughs> Still, they've got a wonderful rapport, these Americans, haven't they? Look at it. Yeah. Loving every minute of it. Absolutely every minute. Yeah. Well, a yeah. handshake from Magoo. Very friendly lot. So, the Americans. First overall, Belgium second overall, Great Britain third overall, and we say farewell, cheerio to Wolan and the motocross the nations, and we hope to see you all next year, 1983.